Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems. This video is going to talk about the IFF property operator inside of SVA. First, let's make a distinction of what we mean by IFF. That's, that means if and only if, and it's used in several other places in System Prolog as well. For example, I could use this in a event expression to qualify the clock. So effectively, saying IFF E there is the same as saying, if I just delete that, same as doing this. So the intention was in the LRM that I double F used in the event control is effectively a, a flip-flop enable. So that exists already. So this is not the operator we're talking about though. I'm just showing you that you may have seen it other places inside of SVA coding. Another place is here. So I might have said disable IFF and then give some bool D for example, or perhaps not the same as inside the property X literally a signal called X. Now that isn't what we're talking about however, what we're talking about is the operator IFF as in that. So let's go to the LRM and have a look at how it's defined. We find it inside of the IEEE 1800 standard for System Verilog and IFF properties. The definition of it, uh, this property is true only if both property expression 1 and property expression 2 are true or if they're both false. So it's a bi-directional relationship in effect. So other like the property implication operators shown there, IFF is bidirectional. So if one is true, the other has to be true. If one is false, the other has to be false. So either both are true or neither of them are. So the LRM defines these properties as being equivalent. If I use the IFF operator, this is the same as saying this, property one implies property two and, so and is a non-length matching conjunction of properties, so both properties have to be true either side of the AND operator, and the property is these containing these implications, which are both ways round. So this one says prop 1 implies prop 2, this says prop 2 implies prop 1. Okay, So both of those must be true. Let's see some examples now. And the easiest way of looking at these kinds of examples is in Jasper Gold, Cadence's formal verification tool, because what this will do is it will create scenarios of the property passing and failing for you without you having to think about what stimulus you need. So we've got inside of this, if I just open the source code, we have a module with inputs only. So the tool will drive those inputs in any way it wishes in order to cause assertions to fail or cover properties to pass. And I've got a bunch of properties down here. Okay, so all these signals mentioned in these properties are all driven by the tool in effect. So the simplest form here is, is using these as booleans. So J and K are just signals, so that that's just booleans. So either J is true and K is true, or J is false and K is false. So we've got two kinds of um, views of this. One is a witness, what's called a witness, that's an example of the property passing, and the other is the property itself, which is asserted. So that's an example of it failing, because there's a red cross there. So let's take a look at the example of it passing. First off, double click that, and I see this window is called Visualize here, that shows me an example of the property passing. That's the shortest way in which the property can pass, that's what the formal tool will do. So I can see here J is one, and K is one, that's no surprise to me. Now the cool thing about Jasper is you can use this wave edit feature, this button here, waveform with a pencil on it, click that, and I say I don't want J to be one there, I want it to be zero, okay? And I regenerate that waveform. So can the tool reproduce the cover? Yes, it can by making K zero and J zero. So notice here I've got a force on K, uh, not K, so let's do the same on J then but force it to be one. So on this first cycle, the property can't pass anymore. What happens? Well, the tool, the only way of demonstrating the pass now is for the tool to extend the waveform for one more cycle. And it just so happens J is high and K is high in those cycles. It could have chose J zero and K zero equally. So that's okay with Booleans. Let's have a look at a more complicated version now of something like this. So if we look at the source code, this is using the IFF operator on two properties here. So these are, are simple properties. These are the two properties that we're using IFF on. I'll highlight them so you can see them. So the name tells you what it does. So the left hand side is B hash hash one C implies next cycle D E. This one is F G implies H I J. Okay. And we want to see an example of that passing. So we double click this witness and we look at the waveform and what I'll do is just organize the waves so they're a bit easier to understand. 
and here we can probably see exactly what we're expecting here. We've got B followed by C, D, E on the following cycles, then F, G implies H, I, J. So that's exactly what I'd be expecting, both properties passing. They don't have to be the same length, uh, as we said before. So how do I you know, prevent the tool showing me it passing? Let, let me try and do something to, to show one property is true and the other's not. So for example, using wave edit again, I'm going to hold down D for those cycles there. So I'm just dragging with my left mouse to do this. So those cycles highlighted there, I'm forcing D to be zero. So what can the tool do? So notice the trace length is five cycles. I do this and all it does is extend a number of cycles because I've forced D to be low for those cycles. And it's kind of messed the waveform up so it's not as easy to understand now. So I can press this thing here called Quiet Trace, which will only show signal transitions required in order to demonstrate the cover passing. I click this button afterwards. And say OK. And there we go. I've got my familiar plot now. OK, so we said in the, already that in the LRM, this is deemed as being equivalent. So there's my IFF operator we've just seen. Here's the equivalent. So I've got property one implies property two and that's the property operator and so that is non-length matching on the two properties on either operands here and property two implies property one so i double f is shorthand for having to write this whole thing out now how do i know they're equivalent is the next question this is again what jasper's brilliant at if these properties are equivalent because there's no drivers for those signals if i make one of them an assumption so this one the lrm equiv if i make that an assumption Notice the assumptions down the bottom now. It's just copied the name and put colon assumption on the end. And I now prove this property. I'm expecting this to pass if the properties are equivalent. And indeed they are. And what I'd have to swap around those two properties, one on assume, one on assert, and then flip them the other way around. So one's on assert, one's on assume, in order to make sure I wasn't masking any problems. That concludes the video on the IFF operator, IFF. And uh, the next question probably is, is, is it of any practical use? And I have to be honest and say, well, no, I've never seen it be of any practical use used in the context of properties but you may see it in some uh, simulation type um, environments but in my personal opinion it doesn't really add much if you're interested in the kind of test environment you can get this from the cadence support site so if you go support.cadence.com so i'll show you the front page so from here if you don't have an account just register now all you need is a email address that has your company name in it so don't send them from gmail.com for example um, and when you log in here this is helpful for all Cadence tools. The environment we were looking at was in Jasper. It's very useful in order to understand SVA and when things pass and when they fail without having to think of what the test case should be for it to make sure you never missed anything. And if you just search for SVA test environment, click on the top hit. And what you have here is that test environment that you can download. Here's a link to the tar file. It deals with both simulation and formal in the simplest way possible in order for you to evaluate SVA expressions yourself. Jasper's by far the best way to learn, in my opinion, because you can use things like Quiet Trace. You can drag the actual waveforms presented to you around using Wave Edit to test your theories about how the property works or not. Okay, so that concludes this video. Thank you for listening and goodbye.